G'day, I'm James and welcome to the sixth and final video on our story of quadratics, all their algebra and graphs. I'm going to finish up graphs today. In fact, we did graphing last video and ended on a very major point. And I'll go through that point in just a moment, but it's the point that actually makes all graphing very simple and powerful by using symmetry as our friend. That lovely story of symmetry. Mathematicians love symmetry. All right, so today, graphing made easy. Finally, this is the graphing video that actually matters. All right, but before I begin, here's something very cute about quadratics. So I'm actually James Stewart Tanton. So my initials are JST. And look at this quadratic equation, negative 4x squared plus 21x minus 7. I actually like it very much. In fact, if I draw a table of values, x values and y values for it, if I put in x equals 1, I'll get negative 4 minus 7. That's negative 21 plus 21 makes 10. Y is 10. If I put in x equals 2, I get negative uh, 16. Negative 23 plus 42, uh, I believe that's 2 gives 19. And if I put in x equals 3, just go 1, 2, 3 and turn. Uh, ooh, can you work it out? I know, you get 20. The reason I know that, because let, let me tell, ask you this. What's the 10th letter of the alphabet? It's J. What's the 19th letter of the alphabet? It's S. What's the 10, uh, 20th letter of the alphabet? It's T. This is the quadratic that spells my initials, at least for x equals 1, 2, and 3, I'll come J, S, T. Actually, a lot of people know me as Jim, not James, as Jim, the nickname for James. And guess what? Put x equals 1 into this formula, out comes 10 for J. Put in x equals 2, out comes 9 for I. Put in x equals 3, out comes 13 for M. This quadratic actually spells Jim. Actually, you can go even further. If you want to go higher powers of x, you can spell James. Here's my personal polynomial. This is the formula that spells 10 for J, 1 for A, 13 for M, 5 for E, 19 for S. Put in x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Out comes 10, 1, 13, 5, 19. You can check it out. There it is. So my puzzle for you is, at least for the three-letter initials or three-letter names, how could I find a quadratic that spells a particular three-letter set of combinations? JST, Jim, Cat, Dog, Matt, any word you like with three letters. How would you find a quadratic that has the same property? And if you want to be very bold, just do it for any word of any length and get to higher powers of x. That's the puzzle for today. Okay, so here's the big takeaway from the last lecture. It's that the graph of y equals any quadratic expression, ax squared plus bx plus c, the graph of that is sure to be a symmetrical u-shaped graph. It's going to be a symmetrical u-shaped graph somewhere on the plane. I mean, it might have a different steepness, it might be like a steep one, or it might be like an upside down steep one, but it's going to be a symmetrical u-shaped graph somewhere on the plane. Symmetry symmetry, symmetry. Symmetry is going to allow us to use nothing but common sense to figure out the graphs of some very complicated things. and It'll actually be straightforward. Here goes. Let's do our very first example. So, so let's forget everything we did last lecture and just use common sense from now on knowing we've got symmetry and it's our friend. So if I suppose I asked you to sketch a graph of y equals x minus 3, x minus 7 plus 10. All right, all right. First of all, it's a bit of a strange looking formula. Is it a quadratic expression? Is it like ax squared plus bx plus c? Well, not quite how it's written, but if I were to expand it out, I'd see x times x is x squared, minus 3x, minus 7x is minus 10x, plus 21 plus 10, so it's plus 31. Yes, it is ax squared plus bx plus c from some set of numbers, so it is quadratic. My point is, once I'm convinced it's quadratic, I'm good to go, because that means I know it's going to be a symmetrical U-shaped graph. So now I'm going to use my common sense. All right, so symmetry is my friend, symmetry is my friend. Did I mention symmetry is my friend? Look at this, look at this formula. I can't help but stare at this and think, wow, there are two interesting x values in this formula. Can you see that x equals 3 is going to be interesting? And also x equals 7 is going to be interesting? In fact, if you put in x equals 3, you will get that y equals 
0 times something, 0, plus 10, y is 10. And if you put in x equals 7, you get y is something times 0, zero plus 10. You get that y equals 10. So both 3 and 7 give the same height of 10. I at least plot those two points on my graph. So let me plot those two right now. All right, so when x is 3, I get a height of 10. When x is 7, I get a height of 10. Now look at this, look at this. We have two symmetrical points on a graph that I know is going to be symmetrical. Common sense tells me, oh, I must have a U-shaped graph something like that. That is, the line of symmetry must be right in between 3 and 7. In fact, what is between 3 and 7? What's halfway between 3 and 7? That would be 5. 2 to the left is 3, 2 to the right, to the right is 7, 5 is in the middle. So I know I've got a graph, symmetrical U-shaped graph, and there's the line of symmetry. Now the trouble is, I guess I need more information. I don't know if it's like a U-shaped graph that just stays up high like that, or maybe it comes down and just touches the x-axis, or maybe it goes down low below the x-axis, or maybe it's upside down. Oh my goodness. So I guess I don't know where that vertex is on that line. It's somewhere on that line. How would I know? How would I know if it's above the axis, on, below, or something else? What can I do? Oh, well if I'm wondering where the point at x equals 5 is, I could just put in x equals 5 and see what y value comes out. I could just put in x equals 5. So let's do it. So let's put in x equals 5, and I get that y is, I guess I could use this formula, that's uh, what, 2? times negative 2, so that's negative 4, plus 10. Oh, when x is 5, y is 6. So it's below 10, it's about there. So now I've got three very symmetrical points on my symmetrical graph. Logic tells me my graph looks like that. I have sketched the quadratic by using common sense and nothing more. So that's the key. Try to find two symmetrical points on a symmetrical graph and then just use common sense thereafter. This is kind of fun. In fact, let's do another one. Let's do another one together. Um, I'll erase this. Do, 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 do. Messy hand, my messy hand. I uh, will change our answer of our question to, let's please sketch a graph of negative two, x plus five times x minus five minus four. All right, strange looking formula, but I know if I expand it out, it will be a quadratic, something x squared, something x's and some numbers. Great, it's a quadratic. So I know it's a symmetric U-shaped graph somewhere on the plane. So the question is now is can I just find two interesting symmetrical points on this symmetrical graph? And the answer is yes, because there are two interesting x values staring me in the face right now. I think x equals negative 5 and x equals 5 are both interesting. So if I put in x equals 5, x equals 5, I will get 0, negative 2 times something times 0, minus 4. y would be negative 4. And x is negative 5, da -da, negative 5 is 0, so all that 0 minus 4, I again get y is negative 4. So when x is 5, y is negative 4, down here, so 5, negative 4. And when x is negative 5, it's also negative 4. There we are two symmetrical points on a symmetrical graph. So I know the line of symmetry, I mean, it's going to be some U-shaped graph like this, or upside down, who knows which way it's going. Actually, I think I do know, know, which, I do know which way it's going. I see it's going to be negative 2x squared, so it looks like the steepness is going to be negative 2. Okay, so that's an upside down graph, but, but how can I find out? So let's see, common sense. Um, well, the line of symmetry has to be right between negative 5 and 5, so the line of symmetry is right here. So it's a graph with its vertex somewhere on that vertical axis. But how high or low do I draw it? Well, I can just put in x equals 0 to see if it's up here or down here or down here. Let's do it. Let's put x equals 0. So when x is 0, y equals negative 2 times 5 times negative 5. So that's what? Negative 25 uh, times negative 2. So that's, um, that's 50. Take away 4, so that's 46. So when x is 0, it's actually at height 46. Pretty high up there. All right, no worries, because now I can see what the graph is. The graph must be an upside-down, symmetrical, U-shaped graph like that. And there's a beautiful sketch. Do you get how fabulous this is? Do you see it? Do you see how wonderful it is? In fact, let's do one more. One more, and then I'll show you what's really going on for the general, general questions one's given. All right, here goes. One more. I'll let you try this one first and then I'll do it as well. So let's please sketch me a graph of x times x minus 4 plus 7. Alright. 
are there two interesting x values staring you in the face right now? If so, use them to your advantage. Give it a try. Okay, this little x all by itself might be confusing. I mean, if you like, I could think of this as, let's do it in blue, uh, y equals x minus nothing times x minus 4 plus 7. I mean, maybe that's helpful, or maybe you just, you're fine as it was. Because I can see now that both x equals 0 and x equals 4 are interesting x values. In fact, if I put in 0, if I put in 4, all that disappears. I'm left with y equals 0 plus 7. So when x is 0, I get y is 7. If I can really see it there. If I put x equals 4, I get that y is 7. All right. So this is a quadratic expression. It's got some x squared, some x's, and some numbers. And I've got two symmetrical points on a symmetrical graph. Therefore, I now know everything. Common sense is the rest of the way. All right, so let's draw what we have so far. So it's 0 and 4. 0 and 4, it both has height 7. So 7 and 7. Great. The line of symmetry must be zip in between. Right at x equals 2. Great. I don't know if the graph is like dipping just above the axis. Maybe it just touches the x-axis. Maybe it goes all the way down below the x-axis. I don't think it's upside down. I think I've got like a 1x squared, so I have a feeling it's going to be upward facing. Well, to find out how high or low it is at the line of symmetry, let's put in x equals 2. At x equals 2, I get that y is 2 times negative 2. That's negative 4 plus 7 is 3. At x is 2, it's 3. And now I can see what the graph is doing. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Look at that. There's a picture of my graph. And in fact, in fact, if you'd like, I could answer questions about it. I can see the vertex has coordinates 2, 3. And I can see it crosses the y-axis at 7. So the uh, y-intercept is 7. And oh, maybe, maybe I can say other things about it as well. So if I'm asked other questions about it, I think the picture will lead my way. Beautiful, beautiful indeed. Now, actually, burn that example in your brain. Memorize that one because I'm about to erase it and we're about to do another one right now. But this example can be handy. So memorize that, have a quick mem memorize memorization of that. And now I'm about to clean the board and we'll do another example. Back in a moment.